Ahoy there folks, I'm Captain Benzi and welcome to another developer Q&A video for Eve Echoes. Each week the developers take four questions posted to them by you the community, they respond to those questions and post the answers to the official Eve Echoes Twitter account, Facebook page and somewhere deep in the bowels of the game hidden in your AI system, good luck trying to find that one. So each week I like to go through these developer Q&A questions and answers and add my own personal thoughts and opinions. To me it's an interesting way to see which direction the game is heading in and what kind of new exciting content we could expect to see at some point on the horizon, so to speak. If you have a question you would like to ask the developers, head to the link in the description of this video, it'll take you through to a Google document that you can complete and send through, and if your question is one of the ones chosen to be responded to in the future, you will win a month of Basic Omega. Now if you also want to be in the chance of winning a month of Combo Omega, then make sure you first of all are commenting on my videos here on YouTube, I give one of my YouTube commenters every single week a month of Combo Omega, and if you join my Discord, I pick two random posts from the past week in the public channels of my Discord to each win a month of Combo Omega there. So good luck, three months of Combo Omega up for grabs every single week, and if you're asking the developers questions as well, there's a chance that you'll win a month of Basic Omega. How cool is that? Anyway, with all that said and done then, usual situation, like, subscribe, ring the notification bell, really helps me out, dead easy for you to do, and means you never miss anything. That said and done though, let's jump into the week of uh, the developer Q&A here for the week of the 20th of April through to the 26th. First up then, do you have any plans for Guardian modules to be available for some specific capital ships? Oh god, or will those be a future feature only for Guardian sub-capital ships? Not saying capitals need those, good, because they don't. Just to know if something like the Sancha Supercarrier, the Revenant, if it ever comes to Eve Echoes, will be able to fit those kind of modules. So first of all, big pause here, really well done for asking the question in such a specific way here. You're interested in information, you're not suggesting that we necessarily need something, that I can agree with because supercarriers are not something I want to see in Echoes personally for a long time. We barely have enough content for standard carriers and dreadnoughts. I really don't think we need to be going up to super capitals just yet. There's no need for them in the game, and that is development resources that could be put elsewhere. So well done for not suggesting that. Yeah, one day they'd be really cool to have. The Revenant is definitely an interesting ship. Also, well done for saying that capital ships, you're asking would they ever get these modules because Obviously, the Sancha ships all have shield field module abilities, the Succubus, the Phantasm, and the Nightmare. If the Revenant were added, would it get capital ship um, Guardian modules? And fortunately, here Wilson says, as we mentioned earlier in the balance patch note, the shield field module and armor link module are modules with very powerful tactical features. When combined with the capital ship defense ability, they might have a large impact on the combat balance. Currently, we wouldn't consider adding capital ships with these two modules, and I think that's a really solid response. Really good question, really good answer. And it actually says a lot of stuff here that I think people need to understand. Guardian ships are designed to be subcapitals. They are a way to shift the balance of a combat scenario. Scenario. If you're using shield fields, you are inherently going to be in a slower, more ranged fleet because of the whole way that a shield field works. If you get inside the shield field, you ignore it completely. On the other hand, armor link modules are a great way for sort of brawling fleets, up close and personal fleets, because it doesn't matter how close you get to them. You can be right in the middle, parked next to the armor link module guardian, um, and it will still absolutely work as intended. And speaking of things like spaceships and that, apparently we've got some helicopters going overhead. Crikey, I feel like I'm living in a war zone these days. Anyway, so this actually says really nicely that yes, the Guardian ships are designed to do that particular role, but putting Guardians on capitals would not be a sensible idea. They're already way too tanky. This means that if the Revenant ever does come to Eve Echoes somewhere down the line, which, to clarify, I would like it to. I think things like the Chemosh and the Revenant, these Faction Titan, uh, not Faction Titans, um, Faction Capitals, they're actually really interesting ships, but it's good to see that they just that they're not on the plan anytime soon. And if the Revenant does come, then no, it will not have a shield field module ability on it, um, which makes sense. I think, in fairness as well, a lot of the Sancha ships don't actually need that bonus. I think you could probably get rid of that bonus on all three of the ships, and most people wouldn't really mind as long as there was something else given in return. Um, but hey, I think that's a completely different topic for a completely different day. Let's move on to question two. 
I know that this question is somewhat far from the game, but with the current profile picture of each character, do you have a plan or is it possible to have an import option of a profile picture, or at least a new face in the character selection? Thank you for your feedback, says Cloud. This is currently not in our plan. And they've sort of mentioned this before. This is one of those questions that has been in the dev Q&A a couple of times. Are we ever likely to get more customization for our characters? And the devs have pretty much said, if it's coming, it's not going to be a while. It's not going to be for a while. Now, ultimately, I get the import option. Um, that could be an interesting way of doing things. Um, certainly because I know the, uh, the, the, the question here is, well, hang on. Could you not just upload, you know, rude 18 rated pictures? Is that not going to cause problems? Well, no, not if you have it linked to something like Facebook or Twitter, which have its own sort of report functions and things there, where that kind of content isn't really allowed anyway. Um, so if you were to, you know, link your account and then have that show up, a lot of games do this, like COD Mobile does. I think PUBG did as well for a while. It might still do. Goodness gracious, I don't know. I haven't played these games in years. Um, but I know a lot of these games, you can basically link your Twitter or Facebook or whatever, um, and it will import, allow you to use whatever you have as your Twitter profile or whatever um, as your in-game character. That could be an interesting way of doing that. They have mentioned in the past as well that they would like to update the character page. Interesting to see that Cloud's just like, no, we're not doing that. It's like, but you guys have said you are looking to update the character page and its different functions and abilities. Okay, I get that we don't need a full EVE Online style character creator here. I still think that's incredible. I love the EVE Online character creator. You can spend hours in it making the most beautiful, amazing character ever, um, only to then basically take a snapshot of that and it it, it shrunk down to like a five millimeter square, um, which is all people will ever see of that thing. So you spend all this time working on it. You can buy outfits and that for it for crying out loud. Um, but most of it just is never going to be seen. But hey, it's still a lot of fun. I wouldn't be against it at some point in the future, but I definitely agree that we need a lot of actual gameplay related stuff. First of all, I've got an entire wish list of things like meaningful PVE, the hacking mini game for scanning, new ships added to Tech 10 to fill all the missing gaps that we have, in industry being balanced and sorted out and stuff like that. There's a lot more stuff that we need before simple cosmetics like this. Um, but I wouldn't necessarily be against it either. I do think that having some more stuff on the character page is definitely a cool and interesting idea. Anyway, let's move on then. Question number three. Are there any plans to include the industrial transport ships to the in-game ship tree so we can view side-by-side -side comparisons? Yeah, this is actually a little pet peeve of mine. I know that doesn't sound like much, like Benzie doesn't really do industrial ships much, but yeah, it would be nice to have them on the ship tree. And EVE Online, you actually have sort of, if you go into the Minmatar or Kaldari or whatever ship tree, um, you have two lines. You have the combat line at the top, which will start with frigates and then destroyers, cruisers, battle cruisers, and so on. Um, up that line, and then below it you have the industrial ships, which include things like the haulers, um, the, uh, what do they call them, the, the big, like, the Fenrir and stuff like that. Um, freighters, that's what I'm looking for, freighters and eventually jump freighters, okay, we don't have jump freighters in Echoes yet, but you do have things like the different types of haulers, and we do have some of the upgraded versions of those, like in EVE you have the Mammoth, which then upgrades to, I don't honestly remember what it is, it's the white one, it looks like a Mammoth, but it uses sort of the Thucker Tribe skin, um, you have the Wreath, which then upgrades to the Prowler, and the Prowler is actually a really cool ship, it like, breaks in the middle, which is really, really cool. Anyway, anyway, I do actually fly a wreath too quite a lot at Tech 10. Um, I like to just go running gate camps with it. I fill the hold with all kinds of stuff and just fly around and hope someone catches me. No one ever has yet, and that's literally on main. I do that on Captain Benzie, so keep your eyes open. Anyway, we are planning to update the ship tree, they say. Stay tuned, because these ships don't appear in the ship tree. If you want to side-by-side -side comparison these, like for example, if I want to, say, check a comparison between the mower and the thorax because I want to be flying a railgun cruiser um, and I like the sort of the tankier ones, I can put those side by side. Or heck, I can even look at the difference between, say, the uh, the thorax and the... Uh, um, it's not another railgun one for the Glente there, is it? Let's use the rupture and the stabber as a side by side. You can put those side by side in the ship tree um, to compare them and actually look at the stat differences and things like that. And that's a really useful tool. If you want to do that with the different types of haulers, you're going to have to grab a pen and paper or just take screenshots. There's no way to actually find them in the ship tree and add them to comparison side by side and that kind of thing and it's it's a pet peeve of mine 
If the ship's in the game, it should be in the ship tree, which also means we should be having things like the modified destroyers and the modified cruisers in there as well. But hey, they are planning to update the ship tree. Fingers crossed that is that. And I know what some folks are going to say, hang on, we're planning to update the ship tree. Are they actually going to be getting a rid, a rid of this god-awful tech system and applying something useful? Well, says Benzi, I see you are a connoisseur of fine quality content. And if you don't know what we're talking about, I will put a link at the end of the video to the tech levels are awful video and you can understand why I really hate the tech level system and why it needs a complete rework. Why it is killing the game. It is the single biggest issue we have in Eve Echoes right now because it is basically stopping new players from joining. It is time to get rid of it. Could this be that? They're planning to update the ship tree. No, it's not that. I've already spoken with Cloud and that's just not likely to happen. Um, I would love to be wrong. I would love to be wrong on that. I'd love to wake up one day to patch notes that say, oh, we've completely rejigged the ship tree, so it's not complete and utter dog crap anymore. And we can go, oh, yay, that's amazing. And I can message a load of my real life friends and say, hey, guys, you remember how you wanted to play the game, but all the ships you were looking at and uh, were like six to ten and months into the game before you could fly them? You know how there was no, no meaningful choice actually involved in what ships you could fly? It's just how long you've been playing the game rather than what kind of skills you've been choosing to train into. Yeah, well, they got rid of that. So if you want to come back and actually be relevant to the game early on now, you can. Isn't that amazing? And all my friends will be like, yes, that's fantastic, Benzi. Let's come back and play Eve Echoes and join different corporations and have fun blowing up imaginary internet spaceships. And everyone will hold hands and dance around in the sunshine under rainbows. You know what I'm getting at here. The tech system needs to go. I just don't see it happening anytime soon. Finally then, moving onwards, are there any plans to add new small and medium ships to give higher tier options to use railguns with shield tanking in a non-interdictor ship? Oh. Oh, is, is that maybe why I've got a mower here on the front image? Is that why I've used the mower as today's thumbnail? Why, yes, yes it is. Is that why I was talking about all this stuff down here, like adding the new missing ships in Tech 10? Yes, yes it is. Because let's do a thought experiment right now. You're a missile pilot. You like small missiles. You look up your tech tree and see at tech level 10, you've got the Gamma, you've got the, uh, the Condor interceptors, you You've got the assaults, both the Talwa and the Korax assault. That's awesome. You've got a lot of choices there for yourself. Go good for you. You've even got the worm if you want to fly that, though you will need drones, admittedly, for that one. If you go up to mediums on missiles, you've got things like the Caracal 2, you've got the Bellicose 3 covert ops, or if you don't want to be a big spender, you can drop down to the Bellicose 2 covert ops. It's still a missile ship. It's still pretty good. How awesome's that, right? Then at tech, uh, into the battle cruiser line, you can go into the Drake. Uh, various different Drake ships, or indeed like the Cyclone 2 Command if you want a real heavy hitting combat ship. You've also again got the Healer, although admittedly it uses drones, and you've got the Orthrus, which admittedly is a pretty bad ship, but there are options there. Now let's look at railguns. What happens if you want to be a railgun pilot at Tech 10? Oh, that's not so good, is it? You've got the Atron 2 or the Daredevil at Tech 10. Mm, not overly exciting. The Daredevil's pretty cool, but the Atron 2 Interceptor's probably one of the least used of the Interceptors, but it's not overly great. Do you have any destroyers? Well, yes, you've got the Korax and the Catalyst, and those are genuinely actually really good. I'm not going to cut off on a sideline on this one. I really like the Catalyst 3 Interdictor. I really like the Cormorant 3 Interdictor. They are fairly cheap. Yes, they have Interdictor in the uh, ship name, but they do actually work as combat vessels as well. It's amazing, and I need to do videos on these. Stay tuned. They are good ships. So there that actually works. But what if you're a medium railgun pilot? What are your options? Is there a thorax at tech level 10? Yes, there is, but it's an interdictor. It's not particularly good at combat. It is actually pretty heavily nerfed by comparison. Is there a MOA at tech 10? Yes, again, it's an interdictor. Okay, but we looked at the Bellicose 3 and decided that that's a bit expensive. We could go down to Tech 9, right? Are there at least some, you know, options at Tech 9? Well, yeah, you've got the Thorax and the Moa Guardian, which are even worse for actual, you know, shooting things and blowing stuff up combat. So, yeah, those are kind of missing as well. Are there any other railgun cruisers that we can think of that, you know, are available at Tech 9 or Tech 10? It's the Vigilant, really. It, it's just the Vigilant. That, that's like it. 
that is your one. Congratulations, if you want to be a cruiser, railgun pilot, if you were, uh, started off the game and when you got your medium weapon skill chips, you went for medium railguns and you fell in love with medium railguns and you've really enjoyed using these ships, at uh, Tech 10 you're flying a vigilant. That's it. That is literally your option. What about battle cruisers? Is the Brutix available there? Mm, not really. It's the Brutix Guardian. What about Tech 9? Brutix Logistics. Okay. What about the Ferox? Well, there is the Ferox 2 Command. Okay. Is it really good as a combat vessel? It's not bad. It's pretty good. Anything else? Any other options? Nope. That's it. So, at a Tech 10 medium railgun pilot, you have one battle cruiser and one cruiser you can fly. Yay! Let's now have a look at, like, turrets, shall we? The cannons. Look at small cannons and tell me how many options you have at Tech Level 10. Have a look at what your options are at, 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 at the cruiser level, at medium size. Is there a hurricane at Tech Level 10? Yes, it's a Guardian. Is there a hurricane at Tech Level 9? Yes, it's a Logistics. So where's a combat hurricane? Tech Level 8. What about things like the uh, the Stabber and the Rupture? Well, there's a Stabber at Tech Level 10, and there is the Cinnable. But what about the Rupture? I really enjoy the Rupture. Does that have a Tech Level 10 equivalent? Yeah, it's an Interdictor. It's not very good at combat. What about Tech Level 9? Yeah, it's a Guardian. It's worse at combat. Oh. Yeah, there's a lot of ships missing from Tech 10, is my point. If we're stuck with this really crappy tech system, we need to get those ships added. So what does Wilson say? Thank you for your feedback, but this is currently not in our plan. We now focus more on balancing the existing ships and modules. Yay. I was actually speaking to Melos about this a while back, because there were some hints in a previous dev Q&A and the AMA and Roundtable that Melos wanted to add a little bit more versatility. If we're stuck with this crappy tech system, we need these ships. So I will be going straight back to Wilson and to Cloud with this and saying, look, thank you guys, I appreciate the dev Q&A. Unfortunately, I do think you guys misunderstand that if we're gonna have this tech level system, I would rather we just reworked the tech system. I mean, you know, we're planning to update the ship tree, could you just update the ship? tree to be something useful but if not could we at least add the ships to tank level 10 that are currently missing i would very much like to see a hurricane fleet issue a drake navy issue a brutix navy issue and a harbinger navy issue at the tech 10 battle cruisers actual battle cruisers that are designed for combat roles yes i've shown that the standard hurricane and the, uh, the tech 8 versions of those ships are capable of doing tech 10 content but it's not quite the same now really is it so, the concept there is, can you please add those ships? Now, could we also perhaps have things like the Hugin, sorry, the Rupture 2, or Rupture Assault, or whatever you want to call it. Rupture 2, the Thorax 2, the Moa 2, and yeah, the Mala 2 again as well, I guess. I need a ship that I can fit small armor repairers to. Um, and something like that that you could actually have as a combat ship. It's not a Guardian, it's not a Logistics, it's not an Interdictor, it is just a combat ship give us the options. If you are going to have a tech level system that literally, literally negates half of itself as you go up, like seriously, oh congratulations, you hit tech level 8. Do you want to fly the tornado? Why yes I do, this is a really cool ship, I like large cannons, this is very very cool. Congratulations, you hit tech level 9, would you like to upgrade to the tornado too? Yes I would. What do you want to do with your torna tornado? Do you want to keep it and still occasionally fly it? Why would I? The tornado 2 is just amply better. So you kind of sell your tornado or just leave it dust gathering dust in a hangar. Then you hit tech level 10 and you get your tornado 3. And the game says, what do you want to do with your tornado 2? And you just laugh as you sail off into the distance in your tornado 3, having made the tornado 2 and the tornado 1 completely irrelevant. See also the Bellicose 3 covert ops, Bellicose 2 covert ops, and Bellicose covert ops, but all of which also negate the actual Bellicose. So there you've got four ships. Three of which are completely useless by the time you hit Tech 10. Isn't it wonderful, guys? Isn't the tech system great? Isn't it fantastic? No, this is awful. We need to get rid of it. And unfortunately, it doesn't look like Netties are on board with this. So this is going to be my next big project. I'm currently working on getting them to understand that stealth bombers are terrible. Once we have got that into, uh, into them, once they understand that uh, stealth bombers are awful and have, you know, looked towards the future at maybe giving these some kind of fix, then we can start looking at either getting rid of the tech system or we can get rid of like you know we can add in all of these missing ships two options netties pick one 
Ultimately, folks, I'm going to need your help with that. So, if you haven't already watched my video on why tech levels are goddamn awful, go watch it at the end of this video. It will be in the uh, like the end card. You can just click on it, and it should actually autoplay. So, if you're just being lazy, it should be the next video that plays because I'll have set it up to be awesome like that. And hopefully, YouTube will have actually listened to me. But if not, the link will be at the end of this video. So click on that, watch that video, get onto the official Evecos Discord and hit that submission channel. Get in there and hit the suggestions channel and just sit there and tell the devs to go watch the video if you agree with me and tell them to get rid of the god awful tech level system or at least to fill the tech 10 slots. Please, let's make this game awesome. Anyway folks, that is it for today's developer Q&A. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, as you can probably hear, I'm beginning to go a little bit stark crazy with goings on in the game at the moment, but I am still enjoying it. I want to stay positive. I just think there's a lot of things we need to fix, and I think as a community, we need to come together. Something that this community is very good at doing in certain situations and god-awful at doing in other situations. Yeah, I'm still working on that YouTube career suicide video of why this community is its own biggest problem, but we'll get to that eventually, you know? I just need to make sure that I look dashing and beautiful for the camera so that you guys don't scream, faint, and die in the first five seconds and thus miss the entire point of the video. Anyway, folks, this has been the developer Q&A for this week. I hope you've enjoyed it. Fingers crossed I'll actually get this one on Friday and that netties don't drop the ball and forget to give us the dev Q&A again. But who knows? Get in there, make the suggestions. Thank you for watching this video right the way through to the end. I hope you've enjoyed the humor with me being in a little bit more of an unusual mood today. Happy sailing and see you in New Eden.